The nervous system doesn't know the difference between something happening now and something happening in the past when you're visualizing it. That is why it works. Visualization is an incredibly powerful tool to be able to go back and heal stuff that's already happened that's very much still affecting us now in the moment. So, two videos in two days. I've outdone myself. What I wanted to talk about today was something that's been pretty revolutionary to me. It's only something that I've been doing regularly for the last couple of weeks and I'm definitely feeling a heck of a lot better for it. And the best way to test out this theory, this tool, I think, is if we can get more people doing it and feedback to me if this works for you too. I would really love to hear it. So please pop a comment down below. If it works or it doesn't work if you've got any feedback, but let's get into it. All of us have been drinking to escape ourselves. Sit with that for a second. We've all been drinking to escape ourselves. It might be that we're not comfortable in the situation that we're in and the emotions that we're experiencing. It could be that things have happened to us or are happening to us that are really uncomfortable, challenging or painful. Whatever the scenario, whatever the case, whatever the emotions, we drink to escape ourselves and whatever it is that we are experiencing that is uncomfortable, that we no longer want to think about, to feel, to experience, to navigate, we just don't want to do it. So what seems quite clear to me now, and it's taken about two years to kind of find my way to this. And it's, it's something that gets talked about in a lot of different conversations, especially when people have been freshly through a breakup, a relationship breakdown, a divorce, whatever. People always say, you're not ready to love somebody else until you love yourself. And it's fucking annoying to hear it. It's become a bit of a cliche and it gets thrown about and people are like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's not very helpful to just state the fact. You gotta be happy on your own in order to, I don't know what that accent It's not, it's not enough. I, I feel like people need a bit more guidance than that sometimes, you know? And this tool that I've now come across feeds into that. It's the how. Okay, but how do we practice self-love? How do we find self-love? How do we build and create and nurture self-love? Because this is such an important part of recovery. If we find self-love and respect and we work at it daily, we will not go back to drinking because it goes directly against self-love and self-respect and all of the good stuff. That's why this is so important. So do not listen to this. Please don't watch this video and just think, yeah, you're right, there might be something in it or like, yeah, blur, not what. Just freaking try it. Don't negate something just because you think it's a bit of hoo-ha or it feels uncomfortable or it feels stupid. I don't care. Do it anyway. Tough love. Got tough love, Michaela, today, it would appear. I didn't realize that until just now, but we got the tough love girl in today. But it's true because I've had to kind of take a hold of myself and do the same. Give myself a bit of like a shake. And like, oi, you've been feeling in a slump for too long, girl. Why? And are you doing things to try to make yourself feel better? Or are you leaning into it and is it becoming almost a form of self harm? So, what I propose that everybody tries this week, every day, as much as you remember to, or even set an alarm and a timer to remind, I don't care how you do it, just do it. Next time you have a moment to sit to yourself in silence and be mindful, or next time you get triggered and you feel an uncomfortable emotion that you don't like, lean into it or lean into yourself if you're having a quiet moment and try to remember a time when you felt not supported, when you didn't feel heard, when you were your younger self perhaps, 
when you didn't feel you had the support from the adults around you, when maybe you didn't feel heard by a partner, when you were disrespected by a teacher in school and ridiculed in front of everybody because these little micro traumas, let alone the large stuff, let alone abuse, you know, physical, verbal, mental manipulation, all of that type of big trauma stuff, the small T's are enough to also imprint on us to then find these unhealthy coping mechanisms in our adult life. So find the moment when you have felt that way. And then as your adult self or as yourself now, because you might be an adult self in this moment that you're visualizing. But I think for me, I always go back to childhood where I know a lot of my, my stuff's lingering that I've not been wanting to look at for a while go back and face that version of yourself and give that person some love for me that means visualizing almost hugging cradling holding this child version of me and telling her that Michaela I am here for you now and I have got you, I support you, I accept you, I love you, and whatever you need to feel nourished, to feel empowered to go into the world and succeed and aim for whatever you wanna aim for and feel that you have that confidence, I will, I will be that rock. I am here for you now and I ain't going fucking anywhere. It is crucial to go back, dig into the shadows. We've spoken about it in numerous videos. Dig into those shadows, but equally, find a visual representation of yourself and your challenging moments and give that person some love and be that strength and support and nurture the heck out of them now because we can. The nervous system doesn't know the difference between something happening now and something happening in the past when you're visualizing it. That is why it works. Visualization is an incredibly powerful tool to be able to go back and heal stuff that's already happened that's very much still affecting us now in the moment. We all could do with going back and giving ourselves some love and some support because it's very clear to me that we have this pain in common, that we share these reasons for drinking, that we are walking around almost as shells of who we could be, of who we want to be, of what we want to achieve. But first we've got to become whole. And I think that means reconnecting with the person that we were trying to escape for all those years. So, Give a little bit every day. It's gonna take consistency and it's gonna take time because if we've gone through a lifetime of self-hatred, it'll take a little while to rewire, but that is what we're literally doing. We are rewiring our brain and we are reconnecting and soothing that nervous system so that we're not gonna be in fight or flight anymore. And sooner rather than later, we will start to realize that we no longer feel as crap as we used to feel. We no longer feel as unsettled as we used to feel. We don't feel as anxious because that's where I am now, where I am now, I am there. I am feeling better. And all it takes really is effort, intention, and a whole load of self-love. So much self-love. There's a lot of channels out there I've, um, I've become aware of recently especially within the recovery field or the sobriety field, vertical, whatever. You can tell that I was in sales for too long. There's a lot of channels out there that don't focus on the emotional, that don't focus on the reasons why, it just focus on the booze. And I'm gonna keep on reiterating that it's not about the booze, it's about the why. And when we get to the why, we're not just putting a plaster over a gaping wound or healing. And so I thought it worthwhile 
to do more than one video in a week because this is something that's really, really helped me. And I really, really hope that you guys find the same. Reconnect with yourselves. Give yourselves a virtual hug and a real one too. And one from me. It's getting sunny in here. <sighs> I feel re-energized to a point. I feel revitalized to a point. Again, I don't like to sing and shout and pretend like everything's perfect now just because we're in recovery. It's not. I still feel anxious sometimes. I still feel social pressures, but I can go out there. I can go for a walk with unwashed hair, with no makeup on, and not feel ashamed of my existence. That's fucking progress. Let's go give ourselves some love. Cause I love you. Let's go.